since the time with Idol Race, who made a couple of really outstanding albums in their day. And it's been very fine to see Jeff and the Electric Light Orchestra doing so well in America over these past six months with the Top 20 single and a hit album there, still in the charts, and likely to move up again with the release of a new single out in America this week. Here's part of a midnight special done for American TV, ELO, and a song from the LP. This is called Laredo. <laughs> Electric Light Orchestra music from the album El Dorado. 
and that was Laredo, and we'll see them again later on in the programme. Meanwhile, we've already played it, please, please. OK, time to come right up to date now for sitting uh, alongside me at this very moment. is Roy Wood. Hello. How are you, Roy? Fine, thanks. Are you all right? Yeah. Just a laugh. <laughs> Listen, I don't know Birmingham too well, you know. I come up here occasionally, but it seems to me still that there is a nice sort of music scene bubbling around in Birmingham. Uh, I mean, is that right? Actually, there, were, there have always been good bands in Birmingham, especially in the, the early days of the move, for instance, when, when I first started. There were quite a lot of good bands around. But um, since I've sort of lost contact with Birmingham uh, group-wise, and there seems to be a lot of sort of good out of work musicians walking around, you know, mm. lots of bands have broken up and things. But there was some, you know, there has been some fine bands. Well, Raymond Froggett, for instance, you know. Mm. How many band. bands were there around when, when the move started, right? Was Thousands. there a lot of things happening here then? Thousands. We used to um, meet in a local club in Birmingham called the Cedar Club. And uh, we used to sort of play there more or less every night. Um, most. There was sort of a selection of bands, about half a dozen bands, who used to play there every night. And if the one band wasn't playing one night, they'd go down and get up and jam with the other band. You know, mm. it, was, uh, you know it, was, it was a good thing going. Yeah. How did the move come together at that point? Um, well, I was in a band called the Idol Race, who mm. uh, Jeff Lynne later joined. Right. And uh, there was another band around called Carl Wayne and the Vikings, and uh, another couple of bands, and we sort of... Uh, we were fed up of sort of being human jukeboxing you know, and uh, playing playing the pup stuff because that was the only way in those days that we could get any work in. You know. mm. And um, so I had some songs that I'd written that the band that I was with at the time didn't really take too seriously, which I don't blame them. <laughs> and uh, I played them to a few of the lads from various bands, and uh, you know we sort of got interested in writing our own stuff. And uh, sort of pick various, you know, just sort of one person from each group. Mm. That's how it came together. Yeah. Because you've been there or thereabouts, Roy, ever since, haven't you, really? You know, and, and these days, too, it seems an interesting thing to me, the parallel situation between yourself and Wizard, you know. Uh, what, what actually is happening right this minute? Because there hasn't been anything new out for a while, <coughs> has there? Uh, well, the last time that we were actually performing live was just before Christmas. We went to America. Mm. And uh, since then, because I've got quite a big recording commitment at the moment. I'm with two companies and uh, I have to produce two albums a year for one company for solo albums and two albums a year for another company for Wizard, which is quite a lot of work really, plus singles and things. Mm. Um, so ever since we've been off the road so that I can get a bit of commitment off me back and maybe get a few tracks sort of stored up on the shelf so that we can go back to the States and um, you know do a lengthy tour and we won't have to rush back to record again. Mm. At the moment we're working on a, a Wizard album, which we've done uh, about five tracks for, which I'm quite pleased with so far. It's, it's different to what we've done before. It's, it's a little bit more jazzy, you know, involving the, the saxophone players a lot more. And uh, I've also recorded enough tracks for, for two solo albums. Right. What about the definition between the two, Roy? How do you decide which is going to be used with Wizard and which you're going to do yourself? Well, it, um, it's difficult. I'm a sort of bloke that uh, works better under pressure. Um, so it depends what is needed at the time, you know. Um, the record company say, oh, it's about time we had a Wizard single out. And we've probably got a, um, a session in two days' time, so I'll concentrate on writing something for that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's more writing sort of specifically for one thing rather than writing a song and thinking, well, will it suit me or Wizard? You know? Yeah, yeah. What about America, right? I mean, you say you were thinking about going back now. Is, is there a definite plan to go back? Yes, well, um, I heard the other day that um, a few dates have been booked for a, a tour at the end of um, July, and so far five days are with um, the Beach Boys, playing with the Beach Boys. Mm. and nine days with uh, Chicago, mm. which I'm really looking forward to. It should do us a lot of good. Yeah. So what about your role as a producer, Roy? Does this mean really that you're going to concentrate just really on your own things now? Well, I've been forced to, really, um, which is a bit sad because, uh, I mean, I enjoy working in the studio. And uh, I, I, I've had a couple of good offers of producing people, which, uh, you know, um, it's sort of been lifelong ambitions to produce like famous people and had those offers and had to turn them down which is a bit strange. Mm. Um, last year, just before I went to the States, uh, Neil Sadaka approached me to produce him 
but since then, you know, I've been recording and stuff, and he's got involved with Elton, and uh, he's mm. doing all right now. Mm. And also, uh, I had an involvement with the Run It, you know, for a while. But I, I still hope something might come of that. Yeah, that really would time. be nice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, listen, the very best of luck with America, right? Great, thanks I look forward much. to the records. Thanks a lot. Okay. See you later. All right, Roy Wood. And now back to Judas Priest, just Bush for a programme which includes music from Joan Armour Trading and Dr Hook. So, we will see you then. Meanwhile, the final, final number now is promised from the Electric Light Orchestra to close this week's whistle test. This is Can't Get It Out of My Head. Have a good one. See you next week. Until then, good night.
called Vultures. OK, it's time to turn the clock back now to 1963 and a piece of film of James Brown made at the time. Well, I was talking earlier of the success of Renaissance in America relative to their <coughs> acceptance here. And to a certain extent, really, the same applies to the Electric Light Orchestra. And here to talk about that and other things, let me introduce you to Jeff Lynn. Hello there. Welcome to the programme, Jeff. Hello. And I've talked quite a bit, really, tonight about America and, and the acceptance of bands of, over there. And really yourselves, the Electric Light Orchestra and F Frampton, Peter Frampton, mm -hmm. are the two really startling examples at the moment of enormous success there and not so much here. Why do you think that is? Um, well, I really, I should think it's about the... Uh, hey, hello, David. Now, I think that the real thing is that uh, there's so much exposure you can get there. You play to thousands of people, you know. It's, it's absolutely marvellous. I can't... Uh, emphasise how good America is, really. It's just unbelievable. When you mean exposure, though, do you mean radio press? Yeah, there's, seven, like there's five million radio stations. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's all these sort of things that you can uh, get promoted on and stuff. It's just, uh, like the four groups you just mentioned, we're all really doing tremendously well at the moment, mm. like you say. Mm. Well, Frampton's got a number one album, too. Yeah, he really is, yeah. Mm. So well, we're in the bleeding top ten, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't knock it at me. Yeah, that's right. So you're happy with America then, really, Jeff? America is like the dream I've always had, you know. It's just unbelievable. It's just a dream come true, really. Mm. Mm. So you've really not been here for quite a while, have you, here in Britain? Uh, not too often, no. Wow. A bit of a problem there, because uh, we've got this petition uh, of uh, like thousands of people to sign this thing for us to, that we should come back and play here. And as you know, we've had to postpone our tour slightly because uh, we were all completely uh, knackered after this American tour, which we did 65 shows in uh, about uh, 63 days, <laughs> no, <laughs> a bit longer than that, but um, I mean, look at the state that we are, I'm only nine, right? Unbelievable, we had terrible pressure over there. <laughs> it was a lot of hard work, you know, and uh, we are doing it to it, but it's postponed until uh, June and July. Mm. We're doing the dates in those months. How many gigs are you going to be doing? Uh, we're doing ten shows, mm. which mm. should be uh, fantastic, you know what I mean, like, great yeah. stuff. Have you got any venues? Absolutely confirmed yet? Yeah, but you'd have to ask our manager because I cannot remember them at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> much too, much, much too silly. Right, okay. What about recording, Jeff? Because Face of yeah. Music's been out for a while now, hasn't it? It certainly has, yeah. We recorded that about, uh, <laughs> about a long time ago. And it's, um, it's about time we got in the studio. We are going to Germany to record our new album in, uh, on the last week in May. Mm. We're going to do the rhythm tracks and then we sort of carry on from there. The basic tracks will be laid down in May, at the end of May. Mm. So when will that be finished? Do you know yet? It'll probably be finished, um, I should think, by August. be finished by August. And it'll probably come out in September. Mm. Have you started putting together material for that then, Jeff? Yeah, I'm just writing it at the moment, actually. In fact, you called me away just as I was doing my chorus line. <laughs> <coughs> Not really, no. I was getting the pictures, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So what's done on that in terms of songs that you finished? Uh, I've got about three tracks completely finished and about another two tracks that are sort of almost completed. Mm. Relative to Face the Music, Jeff, is it going to change in any way? Um, it'll be different, yeah. It'll be uh, completely different, I hope, because I, I don't like to get into a rut, you know, when I'm doing songs. Mm. Uh, I've sort of listened back on the previous albums and sort of thought what, what sort of direction I was going in. In, on those albums, and obviously I, I don't want to sort of get into a, a terrible rut where I keep going along the same sort of lines. I want to do something different, which is this album should be. Mm. Mm. So listen, just just one final question, because it is my favourite track on the album. Is Strange Magic going to be the next single? <laughs> uh, you have to ask our manager. Hey Dave, is Strange Magic going to be our next single? Yes, he just told me. Great. In the All back right. there, there he is, look. <laughs> I look forward to that, and the concerts too. And thanks very much for coming well, down from Birmingham much. tonight. See you, man. See you, Jeff. Sure. Thanks a lot. Okay, and now to the average white band, who again, really, we've lost to the States over the last few months.